Though you might think of the open ocean when you think of a Cordoba bow picker, these two new boats were built miles inland of the coast at an unsuspecting shop in Butte, Alaska. It is January, with temperatures dipping to near 30 below zero, but things are heating up over at Highlight Fabrication. That's where Delbert Henry and his crew are building the new gill netters. For Henry, laying the keels of the Miss Lynn and the exit strategy marked the culmination of a lifelong ambition. Well, I uh, uh, been fabricating for since I was a kid, and so uh, I moved up to Alaska and went to work um, in uh, Soldotna for a while, and then Delbert Henry and his wife Shauna left Alaska for six years while she completed school to become a veterinarian. After that, the young couple returned to Alaska, and Henry began Mary building and, boats. And, uh, and uh, Jeff Johnson at uh, Sea State One, and he builds Peregrine boats, and, and I worked for him for a few years, and, uh, and then uh, um, got kind of addicted to working on boats, and, and here I am. Henry says they turned out five or six boats when he worked for Jeff Johnson. As for his own shop, he tries for one or two a year. Real fortunate for us out here that he's able to just turf us the work and, and uh, trust that we'll do good work. He comes out and, and uh, looks them over and makes sure they're up to his standards. And, and so we feel real lucky to be my crew isn't real huge, and uh, I try to try to do a 40-hour week and keep the overtime down. By March, Henry and his crew had the hulls, decks, and houses completed, but the rigging remained. So it feels like we're on the downhill slide, but rigging is always the big surprise for people when they go to rig these boats. It's, uh, it's... As Henry and his crew continued working on both boats, the owners stopped in frequently to chat about details. The exit strategy is the third boat that Bruce Robertson had Delbert Henry build for him, and it's got a few goodies that the others didn't have. It's just the refinement of systems on it and the looks, and you know, making it making his own signature on, on what the, what his boat should look like. It's New for this year is a more graceful cabin. The bow, meanwhile, has undergone extensive refinement. The, the bow was changed significantly. Uh, it was a, more of a swept look rather than a blunt look. At the complete opposite end of the boat, two extensions off the back of the hull promised better hull performance. But, uh, on, a, on a conventional bow picker, that, stern is curved a little bit and we found that uh, if you don't leave those extensions on and square it off in the stern uh, on the bottom of the hull then it, it creates a, a suction a suction that can cost speed this is the first year i've got them but uh, other friends of mine have put them on and said they've increased their speed and not to not in a half among other new features, Robertson decided to implement access doors into the bulwarks. Though he lamented the inclusion of the old man doors, as he calls them, he says it's time for a little convenience when it comes to stepping over to tenders or onto the docks. This year, Robertson installed a more fisherman-friendly level one. The reels, by the way, were made by Petrozalka Brothers of Seattle. While anchoring used to be the bane of bow pickers, new designs have evolved to replace those capstans of yore. This has come about with the with the larger boats that you can add this on and they not take up your whole front of your deck. And that's one of the the big things of being here and having the builder close by is is you know you can coordinate with him where everything goes. When it comes to coordinating where things go below deck, Henry's new gill netters offer capacious engine rooms and easy access to silt filters, plumbing, hydraulics, and the engines. Like other Cordova fishermen, Robertson and Michael Bowen chose to power with Chevy six-liter engines. The Chevys crank out a whopping 385 horses each and should push the boats faster than 35 knots at top speed. 
Those engines, by the way, burn gasoline and not diesel. The difference between diesel and, and uh, gas is at least $50,000, right, right uh, bare minimum. That 50000 in savings up front sounds good in terms of capital investment. The offset, of course, is an inherent lack of fuel economy when pitted against diesels. But Robertson and Bowen are betting that the gas engines will make up for their fuel inefficiency in terms of getting parts or, heaven forbid, replacing the engines during the season. And then the what-if factor. What if something happens to a diesel there in Cordova? Your, last year, two guys lost their whole season because their diesels went out. Robertson adds that parts for the Chevys are cheap and abundant around Cordova. And just how much fuel do those engines burn? I'm hoping that I'm doing 27 knots and hopefully not burning any more than 27 gallons. If I can get a mile a gallon, I'll be happy. When it came to matching propulsion to those powerful Chevys, Bowen and Robertson chose 8-inch Hamilton jets. And if there's one thing better than a Hamilton jet, well, that would be two of them. Besides the peace of mind that comes with twin engines, the pair of jets makes Henry's boat spin on a dime. Oh, and if it looks a little shallow there, not to worry. Robertson says if he sees the knees of seagulls on one of Cordova's sandbars, that means he's running out of water. If, however, their little knees are submerged, he can make it across. At rest, the two new gill netters draw a mere 11 inches of water. At full throttle, they're nearly on par with an airboat. As the long Alaska winter gave way to spring, the country around the butte began to green up. The ice went out on local lakes, and it was time to take the gill netters out for sea trials. Digital gauges on these, that's kind of a new new thing, so we're excited to see how that works. Yeah, I'm going to head to Cordova next week and finish uh, gearing the boat up, and uh, we'll be fishing out, uh, out in front of the Copper River. Henry and his crew climbed aboard for the ride as the boats revved up and showed their stuff out on the water. For them, the summer holds construction of a research vessel, some repair jobs, and vacations. But as the Miss Lynn roared over the horizon, they looked forward to the season when they could strike up their torches, fire up their saws and their tools, and build fishing boats again. <laughs>